Okay, I know what you're saying, this is impossible. Same lineup against all the bosses. Well full disclosure, this is a fact some of you guys may not be aware of. You can take on any content using the same team, if they are powerful enough. Yes you've heard me right, mechanics take a back seat when you're so OP compared to the content that the mechanics become practically meaningless. And at that point, if your hero's power level is that much above the content, then you can use any hero and win. That's why in my videos, I try to beat content using the minimum level that I can because first of all, XP potions are so hard to come by early on in the season. Second of all, it shows that I use mechanics to, to beat the game instead of pay to win steamrolling it. Now having said that, rest assured that this team is not a team that steamrolls because it's leveled up and fully geared. We are in a low spend, almost F2P account. You will see. Hey guys. Nizzy here, before we continue, please consider clicking that like and sub button and all that YouTube jazz. The team has a few substitutions from one boss to the next, but they have essentially the same core team. There is also a base gear loadout for each hero that we use but there are variations on each boss as needed, and we show them if there are any. So each boss might have its own gear section. You have Sigurd that provides ATK debuffs and usually wears gear that debuffs death too. He also takes care of minions by having an ULT that targets all debuffed enemies. Vorish is here to set things up for Sigurd and make sure everybody has a buff. So naturally he ults before Sigurd. He also takes care of any buffs on the boss that needs to be dispelled. The DPS, the next one in the core team would surprise you. It's not there at all, like many would expect but Lola. Yes, an epic that silenced and stuns enemies. The epic control queen. She also does ATK debuffs on the side. Our tank is also someone you wouldn't expect for a Yes, I know Garius is great, and he is used as some of the bosses, but I don't have the XP to level him up sufficiently to tank all bosses so Furbeth is the one I use because he is the one I have leveled up and he does the job pretty well too. He also has the Def Captain Aura, plus on the side, he also gives ATK debuffs to further provide consistency for Sigurd's ULT and then does debuff removal as well. As for Agik, he is there to be the panic button of the team. He keeps them alive, literally, on those key moments where their HP is expected to go to zero. He also dispels debuffs every time he heals and has a battle skill that both heals and injures. How cool is that? He is so powerful that for most of these encounters, he is the lowest level often hovering around 80. Now for the boss specific heroes, there are only two, Garius. When we need that extra healing along with Furbeth, or on those bosses weak enough that his toughness is good enough. Next is Theraval who actually is an honorary core team member since he literally does the execution of the bosses. But then functionally his is the one that is the easiest to replace. In Vortex, we do our first stage 3 battle of the season. And I have a lot to prove. Also we are using Furbeth which heals slower, and who we don't have scrolled. Then Garius, who provides a burst of healing. For the Green Dragon, we don't even show the minions because at this point we're a joke. I didn't immediately notice that stage 3 would be available at journey level 30 because I had the journey levels in my journal to get to that. I really wish I could have taken on the harder stage because this version was hardly worth including here. In this run, our Agak is just 80 so he wasn't giving that much healing. Garius would be better here and I'll use him as soon as I can get him to 5 star 90. For the Violet Dragon, this proved to be more of a challenge, simply because of the invulnerability mechanic in the second wave of the encounter. That's also why Lola isn't in the team. Her ULT can't hit all enemies at once, which we need to get rid of those crystal minions. I thought the third stage would prove to be a bit challenging because of the rampage that will come, but it didn't. I only had to use Agik's ULT once, and the Violet Dragon's health melted like butter. I was a bit apprehensive about the Abyssal Osses because I'm taking on stage 3 for the first time. But hey we didn't get dressed, or in this case, geared up for nothing. Because of all the extra tentacles, Theraval needed to take backseat to make room for our more AoE oriented heroes. I also figured since we're fighting a brain, we don't need Theraval's death piercing arrows and Lola's less damaging but awesome lightning would be enough. I hope this inspires you to kick these bosses ass too but before you do that, please check out my other vids below.